Okay, hi everyone, welcome back. Now, I guess some of you finished early, some of you finished quite late, and I know it's been pretty silent in the breakout rooms, but regardless, you managed to do the tutorial, so it's great. So uh, let's just start. Uh, bank account should not be hard. So I don't think anyone did the further challenge, which is quite sad. Did anyone did? Oh, actually, group group room one did, wonderful. Uh, room two didn't. Uh, yeah, I think only room one did. Did it? Yes. Uh, but yeah, hey, room four did set up gyro, so it's okay. Okay, so um, I think what I'm gonna do here is since there are four tasks, I'm just gonna call each room to present one of their tasks, which is pretty easy. So, okay, let's just start with room one. There's six people in room one, the most out of all. Um, room one, can you help, uh, help us explain for task one what you guys did in a very brief manner? Um, let's start with, uh, let's just have Ethan. Ethan, can you share with us like what you guys did with deposit? Ethan, are you there? Uh, maybe anyone from his team can help. Anyone from his room, please don't, don't help me out, guys. Don't be silent. Deposit, is it? Yes, yes. Uh, so... Yeah, it's just self dot balance plus the amount that you deposit in. Okay, All right. Oh, oh shit! All right, thanks a lot, Thaddeus. Um, yeah, it's very straightforward. You do. You call yourself. Make sure that you have the balance, and then you add the amount based on the input. All right, thanks a lot, Thaddeus. Um. Next, um, I think it's pretty straightforward. Next up, we have room two. Uh, room two, can you help explain for task two? Uh, okay, it's not sure. So task two is basically uh, your verification uh, task. What, what did you guys do? Uh, maybe um, Adrian, can you help explain? Uh, if the name entered was not the account's name, then cannot run the code. Like you will print, you are not authorized for this account. Okay. All right, thanks a lot, Adrian. Then you will run the following code soon. Mm -hmm. okay. Is there an, uh, anything else that you change from your code, from the initial fun method? No, only the first two lines. Ah, okay. Actually, you also change the parameters, actually. You also change the parameters uh, implicitly. Yeah. So yeah, just keep that in mind as well. All right, uh, thanks a lot, yeah, Adrian and room two. Uh, we'll move on to room three. Uh, okay, room three, can you help us explain your task three? Task three is uh, one year has passed. What did you guys exactly do? Room three, we have Elroy, Hai Hong, Jae Hoon, and An Andy. Anyone? So, wait, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so uh, we added an interest rate into the first definition, and then we added uh, interest rate, the self dot interest rate also. And then the after that, 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 we actually defined the function that is the one year has passed, which just, uh, yeah, which just times the one plus interest rate. And there is the, and the, the first one is if there's the if there's any gyro. Right, right, good, good. <coughs> this one is a quite a unique method where it does not take any parameters in, it just takes it. Uh, it just basically changes the values inside. All right, thanks a lot, Elroy. Um, next we have task four is from room four. Anyone from room four? There's a lot here. 
uh, maybe can we have Ifan to explain uh, minimal account? Uh, so if after one year your account is less than one thousand, then you will deduct twenty dollars. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it takes it deducts twenty dollars or zero, whichever is higher. All right. Um. Okay. Um. Is there anything? Okay, um, there's something wrong with the code uh, for the class minimum account. Can maybe anyone tell us what it is? All right, someone just added it. Okay, so basically it should inherit bank account. Lah. Earlier it doesn't inherit. So when it inherits bank account, it will import everything that's in this part. But then it will, the ones that are defined here will be imported in will be will override the ones in a bank account. So this one one year has passed, we'll override this particular method. And what's nice is that um, it actually calls super, so it doesn't really completely inherit, it just modifies it by a bit. I think uh, since you guys also did the setup gyro question, uh, you guys should have modified the one year has passed as well, but it's okay. Uh, let's just move on to the task four for uh, the further challenge. Did anyone do transfer to Um, okay, I think uh, bank account, the uh, room one did uh, transfer to, so perhaps like, can someone explain transfer to, maybe um, Angel, do you mind explaining transfer to? Or anyone from room one now basically can you guys explain what do you guys do to transfer to this one is a little bit more interesting uh, i'm not very sure whether like i'm not very sure how to explain the concepts between behind my code lah, but self self dot balance costs like the own balance so it deducts on so it deducts the amount from that balance then it transfers to someone else's balance so you call name dot balance, which is which right. I input in the code yeah, that's, that's very straightforward. Yeah, it's very straightforward. Uh, th thanks a lot. Uh, the days. Okay, it, it was the days, right? Uh, yeah. Sorry, I, I wasn't yeah, seeing yeah. my screen. Yeah. Right. Thanks a lot. I mean, it's very straightforward. You basically try to access your bal your own balance and deduct it, and you try to actually um add someone else's balance now yeah um, i think one thing to note here is that yes correct in python right you can actually access the attributes of other classes as long as you have the class in, included here but generally it's not good practice so usually what we want to do that is that instead of directly accessing it although there's nothing wrong okay again there's nothing wrong so if during exam you directly access, it's okay. But generally, uh, when we are talking in real coding, what we want to do is actually we want to do it nicely. So uh, instead of being intrusive by directly accessing it, what we want to do is we use their excellent outward facing methods. So in this case, we have name dot deposit, and then we write a mark. This is much more polite you know if you go directly accessing name dot balance it's very impolite because it's you're some you can say it is in, intruding someone's privacy instead what you want to do is you use the methods that they already defined because usually the methods are you know the outward facing layer that people can actually use that access okay so i think that's good um Another thing is setup gyro. I think uh, room four did setup gyro. So, um, uh, David, would you like to explain about setup gyro? David from room four, Joseph David. Uh, the setup gyro one is. Uh, 
okay, so they say the money will be deducted every year before the interest. So uh, what we actually did was uh, basically we call self and the amount that you have uh, made inside. Then after that, you just minus off the max amount. But then like, uh, okay lah, um, all right. But then like the, the thing is like, if you do, if you code it this way, right, it means that you only call set up gyro once and then it will only deduct once when it should be deducting every year. Right, because like you only call self gyro. The self gyro should be, set up in gyro means like every, the every year it has passed, right, it should be deducting your bank account by the amount of the gyro set in the setup gyro. So do you think, uh, is there any modification that you can make to your code to actually, uh, is there any modifications that you can make? Yeah, you can add inside one year as part, I guess. Okay, can you, the gyro so that you will deduct every year. Can you try doing it for us? Uh, yeah, just type in the code lah. Or anyone from your team, can you just write in the code in bank account 54 on how would you modify this? Okay, I think I lost internet connection. Okay, just start typing first, but yeah, I think I lost internet connection. The rest of you, you can simply go to the, their own bank account file and see the changes that they make. Oh boy, it's just so slow. Is it the internet? Okay. Uh, okay. All right, uh, okay, so yeah, basically, um, yeah, basically, you have stuff, yeah, okay, so, um, okay, is there any because, like, okay, now, uh, I've seen that you you did like self dot balance minus the amount, but then there's no variable amount, right? Both in the self parameter in the parameters taken in by one year has passed now here are there any other modifications that you need to do remember this is setting up gyro ah, so meaning that when i set up gyro i don't deduct it immediately i'm just like telling my bank account hey you gotta need to deduct my account every year by this amount what modification would you make Anyone can help? Anyone from room four or anyone? Just like, just go jump in and help. How would you code your setup gyro? Okay. Put it in a list. Mm, why would you? Okay. Um, put it in a list. I mean, sure, but I'm not so sure why would you put it in a list. Basically, you just need a place to store it, right? You kind of only need a place to store your gyro amount. 
So how would you do with that? Very simple. Um, anyone from room four want to try? Maybe uh, yeah, I'm seeing some changes. Is it just me that's being slow? Um, uh, maybe uh, Derek, Melanie, uh, uh, Yu Chong, uh, Nick, which Ifan, would you like to help him out? All right. Okay, I see south of gyro equals to zero. South of gyro. All right, so um, yeah, okay. So thanks, thanks a lot, thanks a lot. Um, it's I don't think it's gonna be easy, but yeah, basically this is the way we do it. Um, the I think this one is also a good learning point. Remember, like the assignment only asks us to just like create setup gyro where money will be deducted every year for interest. So in this case, we kind of need to think of what are the things that we need to keep in our uh, class. So we kind of need to implicitly initiate self.gyro in the constructor method. We also need to modify one year has passed to ensure that the gyro is deducted every year. And self.gyro is also just like to store it in our uh, setup gyro is just to store all the values in self.gyro. And your PE questions will more or less look like this, uh, where um, um you're just being told what's the method that you need to create and how it works but then like most likely you'll also need to edit other methods or other constructors as well <laughs> all right um uh, thanks a lot um uh, last uh, we have uh the joint account um okay for joint account uh anyone from room one want to explain your implementation And maybe uh, how we would you like to explain a joint account? Okay, I think. Uh, all right, I think we'll just. I mean, okay, I guess let's just explain. So basically, a joint account, if you can see it, inherits from bank account as well, but instead it's. It uses a super constructor and added one more constructor so we can have two names to check. And then we override the withdrawal method by actually checking whether the name is self.name or self.name.1. I think that's the only modification that is made. All right, uh, are there any questions for bank account? Uh, if there are no questions, maybe give a thumbs up. All right. Okay. Everyone else, uh, th are you guys okay, or do you guys have any further questions? Okay. You guys are pretty silent today. All right. Um, it's okay. So, um, from the bank account, please try to understand the, your if you if you weren't participating in the activity earlier, try to understand, try to catch up because it's going to be a quite an important concept moving forward. Okay, so uh, next part is going to be vehicles. Now, uh, I'm, I'm just going to pull out these, these slides first um, for everyone's convenience. Oh, okay, actually, there's a question. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I missed your questions. Uh. Uh, okay, so from the, Joseph say, uh, why need self.gyro again? Um, 
the reason being is that uh, we want to we want the gyro to be uh, set up in a, like when we wanna we, when we wanna set up gyro right we kind of need to store and save the how to say we kind of need to remember what is the gyro that is being set up we need to store it in our memory because we want to store it in our memory we kind of need to do self.gyro so we store it in the memory of the self for joint account the entire withdrawal is copied over can't use any super um um you can um i think you can but then like you kind of need to change your implementation for withdraw because withdraw right okay this one is wrong. for withdraw right the implementation should be uh this is the implementation like self dot name is not equals to name so if you call self dot super dot uh withdraw right um and the uh, the name does not match the name actually matches the second name then it will the withdraw will fail lah. so in this case it's easier to override the entire thing okay uh for setup gyro is it clear or already At uh, both the days and David, are you clear with the setup gyro? Basically, we need to remember lah. We need to remember the uh, amount of gyro we need to deduct. So we kind of need to store it in self, as we kind of initiated by self to gyro equals to zero. Is that is that good? Oh. Uh, once you deduct, it's already a new balance. But then, like the requirement of the assignment, right? It should be deducted every year. So, you know, this is the interesting thing, thing uh, Like it should be deducted every year. So instead, the deduction should not happen during the setup of the gyro, but it should be happening during the one year has passed method. So every year that passed, it deducts the gyro. Yeah, so every year you use the new balance. It will keep on updating itself every year. Setup gyro is just like to set the gyro. Nothing more, nothing less. Okay. So yeah, um, explaining this line, yeah. This one is just to set up the gyro. We kind of remember the value of the gyro by storing it in self.gyro. And then we'll and one year has passed, basically we'll try to deduct the balance by the amount of the gyro. I think the more correct code is this one, because like, um, yeah. I think this one is not exactly correct. Should be self dot balance. Uh, okay. The reason being is that because if it's we follow the top one right, it means that uh, like if uh, like even if the balance is less than zero, right, uh, the balance might go to the negative right after deduction. It will still be deducted because it will only check the max for this lah. What we wanna do is that uh, after deduction, we wanna make sure that the it should not be below zero. I think this one is more correct yeah so we wanna sh we wanna make sure that the up bottom limit is zero la, after deduction not before deduction okay 
Feel free to unmute yourself, by the way. Is it clear already? Why need the max? Uh, technically, you don't have to do max. You can just simply like another alternative is self dot balance equals uh, minus equals to self dot gyro. If self dot balance is under zero, then we make sure that it is uh, back to zero because you cannot deduct anything below zero. This is this particular line here is equals to self dot balance equals to max self dot balance minus self dot zero zero. It's math lah. Why well, need the max? So yeah, you don't really need the max lah. This one is more intuitive, I'd say. It's more English, as it's trying to say that oh, if balance is negative, then make sure that it's not negative. It's zero. Okay, does it answer all your questions? Yes, without the max, it will go below zero. Yes, correct. Okay, uh, we're a bit out of time, so we'll just move on to the next part, vehicle. Now, vehicle is more on the designing principles. So later on, I'll be calling each room to explain how they decided to design their structure. So for for reference, uh, I think for reference, this wait, where's the presentation of that? For reference, this was the um the structure that we the we did from lecture when we had vehicle sports car lorry visarka cannon and tank where sports car lorry and tank are uh subclasses of vehicle tank is actually a subclass of two super class which is vehicle and cannon and visarka is a subclass of lorry there's also a better visarka in the code which is a oops subclass of lorry and tank i think yeah so with that uh, let's go into there are two parts first is add petrol so you gonna need to modify your earlier code on to add the petrol feature uh what you need to explain is where did you add uh, add the add petrol feature in which class and what are the functions that you modified Second is how you implement solar tank. Solar tank is a new class, and where do you put the solar tank? Is it a subclass of uh, a vehicle? Is it a subclass of cannon? Or did you make any other modification? Because I think I see there's now a, I think I see in room two, you guys, I forgot. Uh, there's a petrol vehicle in room three. So I think it's gonna be very interesting. So, listen so okay let's start with room four first room four um perhaps uh nick would you like to explain uh your implementation of the code like how did you add petrol and how did you add the uh, uh solar tank uh we are Oh, okay. Yeah, so you just add in a self dot petrol equals zero. Then for add petrol, you just plus equals the amount that you want to add. Law. Then for the move, if the self petrol is like zero, then our petrol cannot move. Law. Yeah, that's all. Haha, ha, hee hee. Okay, how do you implement the solar tank? Solar tank, I kind of, I'm not very sure if it's correct. I just 
change, I just redefined the move to not care about the petrol. Okay, that's one way of implementing it. Isn't it? Doesn't oh, matter yeah, yeah. whether it's my bad, my bad. Uh, thanks a lot, Nick. So yeah, um, this is the first way of implementing it. Like I think, I think uh, everyone could agree that. Okay, so like what he did is for his implementation, he added petrol at his vehicle class, and then uh, in solar tank he overrides move. Generally, this will be okay. This will work uh, as it's needed. There's another perspective that maybe people think that this should not be the case because technically, a uh, tank is not a uh, because the solar tank inherits from tank, right? But then like tank is not a is a petroleum based vehicle instead of solar based. So technically, some people would argue that you should not be inheriting from tank, especially later on the solar tank will technically have a petrol tank by itself not petrol but technically solar tank doesn't have one but in when we code it out there should be no problem because it will work perfectly fine so let's try to see another implementation i think room three has a very interesting implementation okay and uh, room three uh maybe a uh, high home would you like to explain your your team's implementation where you put your petrol where you put your, how you implement your solar tank, and I think you add a new class, please. Hi Hong, are you there? Um, okay, um, maybe uh, Jehun, can you uh, help explain uh, your team's implementation? Yeah, sure. Um, basically, we created a new class that was a subclass of vehicle, which was patrol vehicle. We were originally going to just put add patrol, petrol and like create like self.petrol within class vehicle, but then we realized that when we're trying to implement solar tank, it'd be better if we had like a like a separate subclass that's petrol vehicle so that we could directly, um, so that even if the solar tank came from vehicle, we would need to override it and delete the petrol. All right, thanks a lot. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a very nice implementation of yours uh, where you try to um, like basically the okay the class vehicle is basically just like a very um it's a very blank structure it's just like the structure of how vehicle should operate and then like you start separating it by petrol vehicle nice nice and then where's your I think your solar tank is very below where is it uh? Okay, I kind of lose it. Uh, I think it's not. We didn't put so I think. Ah, it's okay, it's okay. But yeah, it's, it's, it's actually a good move, but actually like, you know, separating it by petrol vehicle as uh, not all vehicles might have petrol. So that's a different class. What is it? Oh. Oh, be careful, uh, this one you forgot to include self. All right, uh, room two, uh, would you like to explain your implementation? Uh, Jeremy? Uh, did you did you guys do or not? You guys didn't do it. Uh? Nani, I don't know. Oh, okay. All right, we'll skip then. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, last, last, room one. Let's go, let's go. Um, anyone from room one, just like explain what you guys did. I think what you guys did is very similar to room four. So just like briefly explain.
I'm okay, a bit nervous. So, okay. I mean, I generally, I think uh, vehicle one should be very similar to vehicle four, the ones that I stand in room four. So, like, solar tank, the move is overriding. So, it doesn't have to check for petrol. And, um, yeah, uh, in vehicle, it has add petrol. Okay, uh, thanks, everyone. So the, so the reason why uh, I did this exercise is because like we, uh, I do hope that from the four different rooms, we get four different solutions. Because generally, there is no one right answer. There is several ways to actually do it. And it all depends on the requirements uh, of the requirements of the um, assignment or real case study. So in this case, like uh, this one is the kind one of the answers that the module adopts although this is not we recognize that this is not the only answer so for example when we want to add petrol right uh, generally what we want to do is we add that vehicle because it's the logical thing right to add a vehicle because um you know vehicle have petrol but then it uh yeah right uh vehicle has petrol Right. But then uh, as pointed out in group three, right, it's it's more evident that there are now some vehicles that does not run on petrol. There are types of vehicles that actually runs on solar power, does not need petrol. So what we want to do is instead perhaps like we should start separating it into several different classes where we have a petrol vehicle and standard and non-petrol vehicle. So solar tank can immediately adopt from vehicle where it doesn't have petrol. This is one implementation. The other implementation is also perfectly fine when you override the move function. Right. So this is the other implementation. Okay. So now there's a problem. Lah. Like if you do separate like this, right? Um, it's okay, but there's a problem when you are starting to deal with like say solar battle bisarka. Solar battle bisarka right, adopts from bisarka, which if you guys can see is uh okay, it's not here. Yeah, bisarka actually uh it uh inherits from lorry, which automatically inherits petrol as well, but then it is solar, so. How do we de deal with this is that um, it's not easy lah, basically uh, and we it's more of a rhetorical question on how to solve it how to actually deal with solar battle bisaka it's very rhetorical and it is something good to keep in mind when we are designing op so i think the part two of this uh, tutorial is more of teaching you guys like the design issues that we face when we are designing op code is that if every class can be classified nicely, right? Well, the world is, as uh, the next slide say, it's beautiful. Where every subclass is a subset of its superclass, there's no overlaps, you know, it's all separated. But not everyone is like that, right? We have this platypus, for example. Where platypus, right, they got venoms like a reptile. It does lay eggs like a bird. And it also um, lactates like a mammal. So with all these different features of uh, platypus, right, it's really hard to actually put down under which category the platypus is. Eventually, there is a final classification. But then, like, it's really hard to actually classify. So it's really important when you guys are actually working with OOP questions to actually um, before you start coding, try to read the question from top to bottom. Try to read everything, see what do they need and how each method interacts with one another. Because once you are coding from the beginning and you don't read the requirements at the end, you might get yourself into a very big trouble. Okay. So I have uh, 10 minutes left. I think for vehicle, the it's there's not much question regarding implementation and more on the design principles. Hence, with that, uh, for the remaining time, I want to 
uh, I want to use it to show you guys this video by Mosh. Uh, I think it's a nice, it's quite a nice video. Uh, which you guys can watch in your free time as well. I'm gonna share the link here. I'm gonna play it now mm -hmm. for everyone. Okay, I do hope that uh, you just watch. Uh, he'll be explaining about uh, some interesting concepts in OP that you guys just um, did in the tutorial that you guys may not be aware of. And he'll be trying to put a name on it so you guys can understand more on how OP really works. A popular interview question concerns the four core concepts in an object-oriented program. These concepts are encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. Let's look at each of these concepts. Before object-oriented programming, we had procedural programming that divided a program into a set of functions. So we have data stored in a bunch of variables and functions that operate on the data. This style of programming is very simple and straightforward. Often it's what you will learn as part of your first programming subject at a university. But as your programs grow, you will end up with a bunch of functions that are all over the place. You might find yourself copying and pasting lines of code over and over. You make a change to one function, and then several other functions break. That's what we call spaghetti code. There is so much interdependency between all these functions, it becomes problematic. Object-oriented programming came to solve this problem. In object-oriented programming, we combine a group of related variables and functions into a unit. We call that unit an object. We refer to these variables as properties and the functions as methods. Here is an example. Think of a car. A car is an object with properties such as make, model, and color, and methods like start, stop, and move. Now you might say, but Mosh, we don't have cars in our programs. Give me a real programming example. Okay, think of the local storage object in your browsers. Every browser has a local storage object that allows you to store data locally. This local storage object has a property like length, which returns the number of objects in the storage, and methods like set item and remove item. So in object-oriented programming, we group related variables and functions that operate on them into objects. And this is what we call encapsulation. Let me show you an example of this in action. So here we have three variables, base salary, overtime, and rate. Below these, we have a function to calculate the wage for an employee. We refer to this kind of implementation as procedural. So we have variables on one side and functions on the other side. They are decoupled. Now let's take a look at the object-oriented way to solve this problem. We can have an employee object with three properties, base salary, overtime, and rate, and a method called getWage. Now why is this better? Well, first of all, look at the getWage function. This function has no parameters. In contrast, in a procedural example, our getWage function has three parameters. The reason in this implementation we don't have any parameters is because all these parameters are actually modeled as properties of this object. All these properties and the getWage function, they are highly related, so they are part of one unit. So one of the symptoms of procedural code is functions with so many parameters. When you write code in an object-oriented way, your functions end up having fewer and fewer parameters. As Uncle Bob says, the best functions are those with no parameters. The fewer the number of parameters, the easier it is to use and maintain that function. So that's encapsulation. Now let's look at abstraction. Think of a DVD player as an object. This DVD player has a complex logic board on the inside and a few buttons on the outside that you interact with. You simply press the play button and you don't care what happens on the inside. All that complexity is hidden from you. This is abstraction in practice. We can use the same technique in our objects. 
so we can hide some of the properties and methods from the outside and this gives us a couple of benefits. First is that we'll make the interface of those objects simpler. Using and understanding an object with a few properties and methods is easier than an object with several properties and methods. The second benefit is that it helps us reduce the impact of change. Let's imagine that tomorrow we change these inner or private methods. None of these changes will leak to the outside because we don't have any code that touches these methods outside of their containing object. We may delete a method or change its parameters, but none of these changes will impact the rest of the application's code. So with abstraction, we reduce the impact of change. Now the third core concept in object-oriented programming, inheritance. Inheritance is a mechanism that allows you to eliminate redundant code. Here's an example. Think of HTML elements like text boxes, drop-down lists, checkboxes, and so on. All these elements have a few things in common. They should have properties like hidden and inner HTML and methods like click and focus. Instead of redefining all these properties and methods for every type of HTML element, we can define them once in a generic object, call it HTML element, and have other objects inherit these properties and methods. So inheritance helps us eliminate redundant code. And finally, polymorphism. Poly means many, morph means form. So polymorphism means many forms. In object-oriented programming, polymorphism is a technique that allows you to get rid of long if and else or switch and case statements. So back to our HTML elements example, all these objects should have the ability to be rendered on a page but the way each element is rendered is different from the others. If we want to render multiple HTML elements in a procedural way, our code would probably look like this. But with object orientation, we can implement a render method in each of these objects, and the render method will behave differently depending on the type of the object we are referencing. So we can get rid of this nasty switch and case and use one line of code like this. You will see that later in the course. So here are the benefits of object-oriented programming. Using encapsulation, we group related variables and functions together, and this way we can reduce complexity. Now we can reuse these objects in different parts of the program or in different programs. With abstraction, we hide the details and the complexity and show only the essentials. This technique reduces complexity and also isolates the impact of changes in the code. With inheritance, we can eliminate redundant code, and with polymorphism, we can refactor ugly switch case statements. Well, hello, it's me, Mosh again. I wanted to say thank you very much for Okay, uh, yeah, so basically that's the, these are the benefits of OP. So like these are four concepts inside OOP, like encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. And don't worry, you don't need to memorize them. It's just that, um, in fact, you guys have been doing some of them. Like you guys did inheritance by having a subclass. You did polymorphism by overriding some methods. You did abstraction by actually calling other functions, encapsulation as well. So. You guys have been doing this. It's just that this is putting a name, so you guys also understand more of what each thing, what are you guys are exactly doing, and the benefits that it brings to your code. So with that, uh, comes to the end of this tutorial. Um, do you guys have any questions left regarding the vehicle and bank account? Like to be honest, like today is all about. It's very hands on. You guys are just trying out yourself, your own code, and try to understand how it works rather than me teaching anything because it's more conceptual and design-based. Are there any questions? If there are no questions, maybe can you guys give a thumbs up? All right. Um, okay, so if there are no questions, then thank you. That's the end of today's tutorial. Will they be giving us codes like this to, for us to add? Okay, usually, right, usually for PE, usually for PE, right, say, like, the question is on self-handling, right, most likely. Um, 
it will look like this. Uh, like copy. At most, I, this will be the one that they give to us. Uh, at most. But it's just like the skeleton class and then like the functions, but then everything is empty. You kind of need to write your own. This is the, the most that they can give. The least, basically an empty sheet. It is very likely that uh, for PE, they also give you nothing. Like it's just an empty Python file. If there are no more questions, uh, feel free to leave. Thanks guys for coming. See you all next week. Uh, I hope you guys do well in your assignment six. All right, for those of you who have questions, feel free to stay. Can you explain the init for, is it for what I just, for? yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically init is just, init is a very special method. So init here is actually for you just to like um, start things up, basically, just to initiate the class. In it itself is from initiate. So it's just to initiate the class, initiate the object that, oh yeah, the object actually has these attributes. It will be stored itself. Yes, yeah, self is like the brain. Okay, go through super.init, transfer, a bit sharp and fused. Okay, okay, okay. Um, let's go through super init first. Okay, okay, say, uh, okay, this one, uh, uh, pay attention to this one. Uh, so this lorry, right, uh, this lorry inherits from, this particular lorry inherits from vehicle, right? Um, this lorry inherits from Fico, has it want to initiate itself, right? Initiate itself. Now, for initiate yourself, right? You kind of can rewrite everything down here, but there's no point of rewriting everything, right? When you can actually reuse this particular method. So to reuse it, uh, we actually call super brackets, brackets dot init. And then basically we insert the parameters uh, inside it. The same as this, okay? Once you insert, uh, enter the par uh, correct parameters, then it will basically run the code in your super parent class in it. Okay. So in this case, uh, this particular line will actually call this particular function, a method, and then position will, then inside this vehicle self will have self.pause and self.velocity. And then after calling this, we actually can add any additional variables that we want to initiate. Does that answer your question, uh, David? The part on super dot. Yeah, super can call any parent class. Um, okay, okay, wait, wait, wait. Let's let's clarify some things. Uh. Let's clarify some things. Uh, okay, there's no such thing as super dot in it. There's only like super dot uh, un underscore underscore in it. Okay, because the function, the method that is defined in the vehicle, in the parent class is underscore underscore in it. So there's no such thing as def dot in it, uh, super dot in it. Okay, today I've mentioned that why we don't put in self because, okay, this one is the weird thing about class. Basically, um, self is, uh, how to say it? Basically, I think this one, the easiest, if you don't want to mind, if you don't want to break your brain, basically just ignore self. Self is a very, very special parameter. Self is basically our own self. So we're not expecting an input from someone else. So in this case, if 
I define a method with two parameters, self and something else. Basically, the part the self part can be ignored. So when uh, someone else tries to call that particular method, for example, this lorry fee lorry, uh, it just needs to insert one more parameter by ignoring self. The other methods will also be inherited, right? To change it, just bring it to def the method again. Yes. If you don't want to change it, don't no need to redefine it. But if you want to change it, then you kind of need to redefine it. That's polymorphism. Yeah, self is something like executed by default behind the scenes, yes. So, okay, I think this one is a little bit of cheat sheet. Generally, you should not do this, but then if, you know, just when in doubt, just include self in all your methods. Lah. Just include it in everything. That will make your life easier. It's not necessary, but just include it in everything. Where do you redefine it? Oh, in your subclass, in your chart class. So, in this case, uh, uh, mm, say I wanna say really override sub. I want override fee is lorry right? Uh, in lorry, I wanna override the set velocity. Say in lorry, right? The velocity is slower. So if I set like ten and ten, it will take the square root. So instead, what I can do is I can do a set, set, set velocity super dot set velocity at like sqrt bx sqrt by. This is a possibility. Okay, if the super in it is empty, then it should not work. Because then like, you know, so your, your, your initially your sub, sub parent class are ex, is expecting an input, pause. So it expects an input. So if it's just like you call like a uh, super in it, I don't think it's going to work. Lah. What if there are some methods in the parent class that we don't want to inherit it from like not some. Do we just inherit it and leave it there or what do we do with it? Now, basically, that's the problem that we discussed earlier lah, in the design principle problems. Basically, uh, there's no way to actually not to actually reject some inheritance. There's no way of it. Um, that's why um, when we design OP, we kind of really need to think like what inherits from what. Because once it is a sub -class, a chart class of something, right? There's no way of not inheriting the method. You kind of need to inherit it. I think there's a question from Melanie earlier. Is Melanie still here? No, she's not. She's not here. Wow, I feel bad for her. She had a question earlier. Um, we, Python does not know private. Yes, that's the thing. It's I know in if you actually did uh, other languages, you can actually make it private, static, you know those kinds of things. But in Python, we cannot. That's why even in Python, right, you can actually access someone else's, uh, you can actually access someone else's uh, attributes, which is actually very bad practice. Eh, the, wait, what? Not private, man. Okay, then I, I think I need to check first. Got private, man. Okay, that's new, I guess, because I think in the past Python does not have private methods.
this one right uh, okay Oh, it's a new edition. Oh, wow. Oh, that kind of thing. Uh, um. Okay, I'll have a look at it. Um, yeah, I'll have a look at it. Um, I'll have a look at it. Lah. But yeah, I guess it's good. But then like, I think even if it's private, it technically can still be inherited. Yeah, like private methods doesn't mean that it cannot be inherited. I think private methods can still be inherited, but I need to have a look at it. Yeah, usually like, private methods can still be inherited, but it cannot be accessed outside. Yeah, thanks for finding that out though. It's, uh, yeah, it's something new. I, I think I'm gonna, uh, okay. Okay, I'll check after, I'll check it later. All right. But yeah, um, I guess that's private lot. But I think even private, I think you can still inherit. See how long. Any other questions? Those in class can use the function, but can those inherit it still use it? I think can. I think can. All right, then uh, I better uh, end the tutorial here. Next week. If uh, next week, okay. So for my, for all I know, right, usually um, the very final part of this course, right, is on, fo focuses only on OP. I'm not so sure what they're going to touch next week, like, but usually it's just going to be working around OP a lot. But yeah, I have no idea what's next week. Yeah, I'm so sorry. All right, I'll, I'll end the meeting here. I need to prepare for a quiz. Thanks, everyone. Uh, have a nice day.